For therefore I am sent. Jesus speaks. Some of you still turning over there. The last verse in Luke, the fourth chapter, Jesus speaks. He says, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for there too I am sent. And tonight we want to speak on the subject, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. It is important tonight that we understand the kingdom of God. What is his kingdom? We know that a kingdom is a promise. Let's pray. Now, Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We magnify you, divine, and exalt you now. We thank you for this word. Now, release the scrolls, the mysteries of the revelations, and sign of the kingdom. That these are children tonight. In Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. Now, you may be seated. The kingdom is very, very important. We always hear the kingdom of God. We always hear people talk about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. Jesus demonstrated signs, wonders, and miracles. Tonight I want to share with you the kingdom. I want to share with you that why is not just a word, why is just not a promise, but it's a spiritual realm, it's a spiritual place, it's a spiritual authority like no other authority. When you enter into the kingdom of God, you get into a power and a realm and an authority like no other. When your life shifts to the extent that you surrender who you are to become who God ordained your life to, you can enter into his kingdom. There are many people and many believers who serve God, but they don't know God. They serve Jesus, but they don't know Jesus. They don't have a relationship. It's amazing that we work for people and we don't know who those people are. We do it every day. Some of us work for the owners of this company and the owners of that company, but we don't actually know the owner. But one thing I want to say to you tonight is that you want to know the owner, Jesus. You want to know who he is. You want to know his purpose because you are part of the purpose of God. You are part of the plan of God. And as a result of being a part of his purpose and a part of his plan, it's vitally important you understand his kingdom. The word teaches us, uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven in the Lord's prayer. Now notice something. It does not say my kingdom, but it says thy kingdom come. Then it says thy will be done. Now, now catch this. In order for the will of God to be done, his kingdom has to come what? First. His spiritual authority has to come first. His spiritual realm has to come first. When his kingdom comes first, then everything that he's ordained your life to can manifest. Why is that, Apostle? Because he says in one passage of scripture, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, then he says, and his righteousness, and then he says, and all these things shall be added. So there we have the kingdom what? Again, thy kingdom, thy spiritual will comes, thy will be done in earth, me, as well as upon the earth, thy will be done in me as it is in heaven. So when you call forth the kingdom of God, remember when John was running around hollering, repent for the kingdom of heaven, what is at hand? He was simply making it known that there was going to be a shift in the way things were being done. He was making it known that there was going to be a change in the way we see things. What we see ordinarily is not going to be the same. Now, if you go back and you look at America for just a minute, I was watching the news when I went home this evening, and I see how God is allowing flooding to take place in some areas. And then in other areas, it's being consumed by the fire. Now, there is a significance there, and I want you to see the significance. First of all, the fire burns everything that's unpure, and the water cleanses. So there is a purifying of the earth taking place 
through the water, and through the fire. And God is getting the attention of the entire nation by his actions that's taking place. Now let's go back to the kingdom for just a minute. I want to break this down for you in just a minute. Jesus speaks in this verse 43. I just want to focus on 43 for now because there's a whole lot here. Jesus speaks. He says unto them. Now he's talking to the apostles. He says, I must preach the kingdom of God. In the kingdom, there is a message. And the message can only come through those who are connected to the kingdom. In the kingdom, there is a message of God. Not only is there a message of God, the message is the good news. The message is the gospel. The message is the word of the Lord. The message is that God has made a promise to every human being, and if we receive the promise, manifestation can come forth. That's the message. The message is I have come to heal. I have come to deliver. I have come to set free. The message is I have come to turn your life around. I have come to heal the brokenhearted. I have come to heal the broken spirit. I have come to shift every situation and every circumstance that you're facing. The message is, even when they were in the Old Testament, the message was that should have been propagated and that should have been preached was, I came to set you free. The good news of the gospel is, I have come to take you from the old and to bring you into the new. This is the message of the kingdom. I have come to show you how to love unconditionally. I have come to show you how to love without restraint. This is the message of the kingdom. What Jesus brought forth was the mindset of the Father, meaning that he could not do it in his own thinking process, but he had to die to who he was physically so that the will of God could truly come forth. Signs, wonders, and miracles can truly come forth when we die to who we are and allow the kingdom of God to manifest. Well, Apostle, how did the kingdom of God manifest through Jesus Christ? It manifested through signs. It manifested through wonders. It manifested through miracles. Let's talk about that for just a minute. Jesus brought forth the kingdom. Notice something that Jesus did not do. He did not condemn those that he prayed for. But he prayed for them, and then he gave them instructions. He did not require anything of them before they received. Only thing he required was that they tell no man after they received. So when he brought forth the kingdom, what he brought forth was free. It was priceless. It did not cost anything. All we had to do was fully accept it. All we had to do was fully receive it. See, the kingdom of God comes into us because we are willing to receive it. The word says in one passage of Jesus that many shall walk the earth. Many children of God shall see signs, wonders, and miracles, but they will be cast into outer darkness. The reason is because they never enter in to that place of God. I said it before and I'll say it again. The kingdom of God is needed in the earthly realm. It's not needed in the heavenly realms because that is the throne of God. That is the place where God dwells. So what he's done is he sent his messenger or his message to the people of God, to those who are willing to accept God, to tell them that I want you to do it this way. And if you do it this way, my kingdom can come on earth inside of you. In other words, what is done in the spiritual realm, you will be able to perform in the natural realm through the spiritual realm through Jesus Christ. That is my kingdom. My kingdom is a province. It is a place where I reside. And because you come into that place, you come into my presence. And when you come into my presence, I can utilize you. I can use you because you've decided to step inside of who I am. You've decided to shift your way of thinking. You've decided to shift your idea. You've decided to shift your mind and enter into a realm that no man will go into. You've decided to walk into a realm with me boldly and accept who I am boldly. And as a result of accepting who I am boldly, I can bring change into the earth through you. 
for I've given you a purpose. I had a plan for your life from the very beginning of dispensation. That purpose and that plan for your life was that I come inside of you and I demonstrate who I was in the flesh. I come inside of you and I demonstrate the kingdom of God through you. That's his kingdom. His kingdom is a place where you will reside continuously. You live there daily. You're always in the presence of God. Notice something. Jesus stayed in the presence of the Father. He prayed unto God consistently. He stayed in his presence daily. He went before the Lord and he taught the apostles to do likewise. Remember the word talks about the woman, the, the soup saying. And it says the apostles was on their way to pray. And while they were on their way to pray, the soothsayer began to agonize them. She began to play with them. She began to make fun of who they were. And the word says that Paul turned around because he got fed up with them. And the word says he cast the spirit out of her, the spirit of divination, the spirit of soothsaying. In the kingdom of God, you have the authority and you have the power to cast out demons. Every demon that will not bow down to God, you have the power and the authority through Jesus Christ to bind that spirit. You have the power and the authority through Jesus Christ to break the stronghold in the minds of every unbeliever. Those that don't know, see, when there's a true transformation, it starts in your mindset. Romans teaches us that the mind is the enemy against God. So it is the way we think that is the enemy against the Father. Not the way we feel, but it has nothing to do with our feelings. It is with the way we think. Why? Because when the kingdom of God comes, he processes who you are, he reanalyzes who you are, he brings about a transformation, and when he brings that transformation, you no longer think like you once thought. Because you begin to take on the word of God, which is the message of God, which he sent Jesus forth to bring. The gospel of the kingdom. That's why Jesus says, I must preach the gospel. It is the gospel of the kingdom of God that brings transformation. We hear a lot of messages preached, but only the gospel will change you. Only the gospel will shift you. We can preach about ball games. We can preach about storefronts. We can preach about anything we want to preach about. But when the word of God begins to come forth, it is his word that will deliver. It is his word that will set free. God's kingdom is his word. And his word will work in you because you shift from who you are to who you are. We are connected to the Father. And as a result of being connected to the Father, he breaks us daily. He molds us daily. He shapes us daily because he's ordained our life for his purpose. Now we must seek his purpose. That's why he says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Yes. That means we've got to seek to know who he really is. we got to seek to understand who he really is. Even when we understand, we don't understand that we understand. Understand? Even when we think we know, we don't know that we really know that we know, understand? Why? Because God is consistently elevating you. He's consistently growing who you are. He's consistently making you more and more and more and more and more like who he is. As we die, he resurrects. Amen. Apostle Paul said, I die daily. He said, I decrease that God may what? Increase. So as he died, Christ resurrects on the inside. Look at this. He says in that verse, I must preach. That means to holler. That means to scream. It means to declare. It means to announce. It means to pronounce. It means to say the message of God. It means not to take anything from it, but it means to put every word that God has applied inside of you. When you stand up and you begin to open your mouth, you should begin to speak kingdom in the lives of those around you. You should begin to speak healing in the lives of those around you. My brother, I'm praying for you. The word of the Lord says that Jesus was bruised for your iniquities, and by, your, by his stripes you are healed. When you release that word, that word begins to take shape in the mind. It says, hmm, wonder what that means. I don't understand what it means, but you release kingdom, and when you release the kingdom, kingdom begin to take shape. Kingdom begin to take effect. So you realize that you're not all that that you thought you was because what? You just received an impartation. You just received an activation. You just received a shift through the word of God. 
Many times we want to see signs, we want to see wonders, we want to see miracles. But the reason that we're not seeing what we want to see is because we're not preaching and teaching the kingdom of God. We're not preaching and teaching the word of God. We use it a little bit, but we got to walk in it. We've got to live in it. We've got to dwell in it. We've got to stand up in it in the morning and stand up in it in the evening, in, in the evening, in the noon day. We've got to stand up in it 24 7. When we get it, we should begin to quote the word of God. We should begin to quote the scripture because his word is his message to the message. His word is what he wants us to have in our hearts. His word is what he wants us to have in our spirits. It is his word that shifts us. It is his word that knows us. It is his word that shapes us to be just like Jesus himself. His kingdom. It is his kingdom that brings about a change. He says, I must preach the kingdom. Let's go back to the kingdom for a few moments. Jesus, as I said earlier, demonstrated the kingdom. First of all, he demonstrated the kingdom because he acknowledged, first of all, that it wasn't his. One of the problems with a lot of us as believers is we want to take ownership of something that's not rightfully ours. Some of us are even claiming Jesus and we don't even know him. But he realized that the kingdom did not belong to him, but it belonged to his father. And one of the things we've got to realize is that the kingdom don't belong to us, but that it belongs to Jesus and the Father. We must acknowledge, first of all, that it is not mine. The power is not mine. The glory is not mine. It belongs to Jesus Christ. Then when we acknowledge that it belongs to the Father, we position ourselves that he can trust us. Many of us wonder why we're not walking in power, signs, wonders, and miracles. But ask yourself this question, can God trust me? Can God truly, really trust who I am? If he anointed me to the extent that I can walk in signs, wonders, and miracles, can he really trust me to give him all the glory? Can he really trust me to acknowledge that it's not me, but it's the kingdom of God working through me? It's the power of God working through me? It's the Holy Ghost working through me? It's the triumph of God working through my life? And it is him that gets all the glory. Every sign, every wonder, every miracle that takes place. It is Jesus Christ that's working through me, that's causing the miracle to come forth. His kingdom. Jesus demonstrated the kingdom. He demonstrated his father's kingdom and when he demonstrated the kingdom, he laid hands on the sick and they recovered because that was a part of the message to the message. I came to heal the broken hearted. Remember when Jesus said in, 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 in Isaiah, he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He acknowledged that God was upon him because God had given him a purpose. He acknowledged that God was upon him because he had an assignment. Every believer has an assignment. Every one of us that say we accept Jesus Christ is our Lord and say, before you ever knew flesh, God gave you an assignment. Before you ever know who you were, God gave you an assignment. Before you decided to walk out in, accept him as your Lord and Savior, he had already given you assignment. He had already destined your life for his purpose and for his plan. For his kingdom's sake. Amen. Jesus demonstrated.